Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here, and I have a special guest. Uh, Mark, you're from Austin, correct? I live in Austin, Texas, originally from Oregon, yeah. All right, wonderful. And um, I had heard through the grapevine you have a great product. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your product so we can start there? Thanks. Um, so the product we sell is called a Go Magnet. It's, uh, it's an exceptionally strong double-sided magnet. I don't know if you can get it up to the camera or even see it. Yep. Um, it's got little grommets in the side. People use this to hold firearms. They use it to mount um, and mount pistols in their vehicle underneath their dash. They use it to organize them in their safe okay. um, and kind of all over the place. So it's really easy to, to organize. Is it just handguns or is it larger? Probably not rifles, just handguns, correct? Um, we sell some that you can use for rifles. Rifles get a bit more difficult because they're often not made of steel. They have different parts that are made of plastic polymers and wood and other things so it gets a little more difficult with magnets so what is the we're going to show it on the screen in just a minute but tell us what is the one line benefit of your product what, what is the one line benefit yeah um you never have to stack uh pistols in your safe again all right so it's a great organizer it just ha it makes it easier to access them probably and store them and get them and keep them in good shape manufacturer right i mean you sell this right yeah but that wasn't always the case I, I tried to license it at one point in time um rather unsuccessfully uh but i did learn a lot in that process that's okay. when i couldn't get anyone to license it i started making it that's okay that's all right um so let's talk about it for a minute because i think a lot of people probably are thinking the same thing mark they they have an idea and they try to license it and it doesn't work. So you jumped in and started manufacturing. How many years ago? Uh, about four years ago. Um, we used to, I, I think I ordered enough material to make 40 and, and I launched a website for 20 or $30. And then um, I, people would order them and I would make them at my kitchen table and then ship them out. Okay. And uh, that sounds yeah. about, that sounds about right at the very beginning, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot's changed since then. I mean, I think at one one year, I think we 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 pushed a hundred thousand of them out the door, and so um, you know a lot. Everything has changed since that time. But yeah, boy, when the beginning, it was just okay. it was just me and some glue and some fabric and some magnets. So yeah, I think that's pretty typical. So looking back, it probably takes a lot more time than you probably think. Um, I've heard that and experienced that myself. It it takes a lot of work. Is there any? Any particular thing that you remember looking back that you didn't really see that was going to happen being a manufacturer? Yeah, gosh, plenty. Okay. Um, think about that question for a second. We had, I mean, uh, there there were a lot of, uh, at one point in time, we, we got some bad material um, and created a bunch of bad products okay. um, with it before catching it. That was one thing that occurred. Um Material prices went up and down. Material suppliers had issues. I mean, all the common things you would deal with as a manufacturer. Okay. I guess some of those were expected, and just some of them were a little bit more okay. 
we're a larger problem than what I what I expected. I, when you're first starting out, you don't need a lot of money. But when did you start to need some good good cash flow coming in? When when did that happen? Um, gosh, it, this was a very unique uh, business. I started when I was in a very bad place in life, um, and I didn't have any cash. And um, I, this business was built entirely off the cash made from the company. So okay. ne we never took a loan. Um, oh, very good. And, and we just we just tried to make money. And that's one of the things I try to tell people who are getting started is, is just just start making money. And once you get to there, the problems tend to money solves a lot of problems. And, and if you're trying to solve them all before you've before you've got sales, um, okay. you know, you, you, you can it can get very expensive and you can find yourself in a bad place. Okay. So how do people find you now? Is it strictly online? Do you do trade shows? Is it in stores? How do people find you? We very rarely do trade shows. Um, we'll do two or three of the largest ones a year in the gun world, uh, the SHOT Show, uh, to help. That's a big wholesale uh, account place. Um, most of our advertising has been on Facebook uh, over the last four years. Okay. And that's where we've grown. I mean, I think our Facebook following is 360,000 people right now. Wow. So We've we've grown pretty large. I don't know, 60, 70 million video views. Okay. Um, okay. We push a lot of content. So. Yeah, I think I think there's a great opportunity these days to target certain um, customers now with with the Facebook ads, and that probably that's probably really smart. So the trade shows. Why not the trade shows? Too expensive? Just a pain in the rear end? Um, well, it got to a point um, where the trade shows were were. Uh, we would the amount of money that we would make at a trade show would be um, yeah. probably maybe a, a, a fifth of what we would make in a day of online sales. <laughs> and so and that's in an entire weekend of a trade show. And that's and we're talking about one day of online sales. And so it got to, it got to the point where it really wasn't worth it time wise. Got it. it wasn't a smart time investment to spend three days at a trade show. Um, now, I will go back and say that having. Having done a direct to consumer sales position and not building our wholesale sales position like we should have from the beginning, um, and the trade shows help with the wholesale. It helps you get it helps you get established with stores okay. and those larger retailers, and that is the long game if you really want to stay around for a long time. Direct consumer sales is a very difficult dogfight to be in. Okay, so, and that's what you're doing now. You know, I'm, I'm glad you made that point of difference because I think the trade shows. It's about establishing your brand. It's about being there. You're in the game. Yes, it's not so absolutely. much about those sales, but um, maybe potential sales down the road, meeting the buyers, distributors. That that's a long term play. You're you're right about that. Um, yes, sir. And it is a big investment too. And but it's not about so much writing orders anymore. That's what I've been told. I, I think that's been like that for years anyway, though. Um, so people find you, you do the direct marketing, very, very cool. It's a very small, I wouldn't say small, there's a lot of people with firearms, there's no doubt about it. And um, let's talk about knockoffs, okay? <laughs> um, I have an, an enormous amount of experience with knockoffs. Okay. Is that just, I mean, I tell everybody, look, if you're successful and you've got a great product idea, there's going to be competition. You know, maybe maybe knockoffs is the wrong w word. Is it the wrong word? Or is it the right word? Um, I, I would say it depends. Um, there are knockoffs, and then there is competition. Okay. Um, there are the one of the major problems we have today is that we've got an international marketplace, and uh, but not an international legal system. And I'm not saying we should. Okay. I mean, don't misplace that. I don't want an international legal system. What I'm saying is is that the the, legal, the laws that apply here in the United States don't apply internationally, okay. but we've got international um, international marketplaces and points of contact, points of sale going on. And so you've got people who are ethically bankrupt or ethically have, have major ethical issues um, that, that will use your videos, they'll use your pictures, they'll use... I mean, they'll, you, they'll basically pretend they're you and sell something that is, you know, that's junk. And then that, that is a big knockoff problem. So. Yeah, that's pretty typical. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, if you've got a product that's selling, they're going to find it. And they're going to take all your 
your assets. They're going to take your photographs, your videos, yeah. your name. They even take your name sometimes. They, they, they took our name. So we, we launched a second product called the MagPad. It was this um, back in October of last year. And um, within two weeks, uh, there were more than 150 people using our photos, our name on Amazon, um, selling out of China. That's how fast it happened. And um, they're, they're, we they're, suffered badly through Christmas over that. So, shame on those guys. Um, yeah, they're they're it's a tough deal. Yeah. So, what do you do about it? How do you do? You well, stop? Can you do? You stop them? Can you stop them? How much time do you spend in money on it? I, I spent. I, I should have just had a, a direct phone line to Amazon for about a month and a half because I think I we spent an hour or two on the phone every day. Um, Amazon does not want to get in the business of intellectual property enforcement. They don't want any part of it. Um, so they're they're and they're not super motivated um, to stop any sales, right? They want all sales that they can get. So when you call them, you really don't get a very good response. And they and they, I would say that the only response I ever got from them um, was when they sent me a warning that I was infringing on my own product and that I needed to email myself and get permission to use my photos. And then they shut down my page for a little while, my actual page, while they left the other ones up. So that was the only response I ever had from them. I was contacted a while back by a company uh, called Redpoints and uh, redpoints.com. Are you familiar with Redpoints? Very much so. Uh, and and um, they have worked some miracles on that front. You know, I, I believe that over the last, and we only started with them about three months ago, but over the last three months, um, we've gone from in the, I mean, I think we've found over 500 infringements out there, okay. people copying us or stealing photos. And I think we're down to one or two and, uh, we clean those up basically daily or weekly. Yeah. And that problem, um, has gone away. Now the problem of people stealing our name, that's not, I couldn't trademark it. I tried to trademark it. I couldn't get the trademark on it. Um, it was defined as descriptive and we had other okay. legal problems. But but they have cleaned up the use of our photos and our copywriting, and it's been yeah. – I, I strongly recommend if you're having that problem that you reach out to them. Yeah. Um, I'm very familiar with Red Points. Um, I did uh, a, a podcast with them or maybe – I don't know what it was, but they're out of Barcelona. I think they're in New York too. But what's really great about Red Points – I'm glad you brought that up. They do police it, and – they have some very simple tools that they like to have, and they're not really expensive tools either. Um, a trademark is actually a good one because of the name, copyright because they're using your photos, which is, sounds very simple, and that's that's great. And they have relationships with a lot of online sellers, so they can shut those down. Um, but it's not. The, but go ahead. So, I was going to say one of the things that's interesting about that, and why Red Points is so important, is that you. If you're going to file a copyright infringement on Amazon, it will take you for one infringement. It will probably take you 15 minutes because okay. you've got to fill out a whole bunch of information. So if there's if there's hundreds of them, you're just lost. You don't have the time. Yeah. Redpoints gathers them all up. You do a single click. <laughs> yes, this is an infringement. No. And then they they process all of the infringement paperwork for you and okay. reports. You don't have to do any of it. Yeah. What I like about them, um, it's amazing how big a problem this is. And they've they're, they're trying to, to help. Um, the way I kind of looked at it, you, you're either going to have to do it yourself or hire someone within your company and pay someone a salary to do it because it's like whack-a-mole. The, it, the, it's it, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, or you pay them a, a certain amount. And I don't think they're, I don't think they're um, extravagant, but it, there's a cost associated with that. But there's a cost when they, they, they hurt your brand and they're selling your product too. So you have to kind of weigh yeah. both sides of it. Um, I, I would say that the cost is fairly reasonable, and it's um, it would be less. It depends on it depends on the scope of what you're trying to do, but I mean it's it's a reasonable, it's reasonable. Is there any other advice you can give anybody that's listening now that is going to venture? Maybe they tried to license. Um, is there any 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 type of you know a couple tips to say? Look, maybe you cannot license it, or maybe. Um, or maybe you want to potentially license it later once you prove there's a market to it. But it doesn't really matter. You're going to venture. You're going to start manufacturing. What should you do to prepare for that? I think there's two 
two pieces of advice I would give. And one is, is don't wait for, just start selling something, get a sale. Um, some people will want to build their website till it's perfect and they want to order, you know, they, and they want to, they want to make sure that they're ready to handle 6,000 orders a day once it launches and, and that everything's set. It's not going to be like that. And it may, it may be, it's just not. You're not going to have that. I mean, you're going to you're going to launch and it's going to be slow and it's going to be disappointingly slow and you're going to and you're going to struggle. And the second thing is don't there are other people out there that I have seen that will order three, five thousand units worth of stuff um, and spend thirty, fifty thousand dollars to get ready to launch something. OK. Now, if you are already know there's a market and you already know there's sales and you know that you're just entering into it and you think you can steal some of that, maybe. But if it's a new product you could very well sit there and sell two of them and then find yourself wondering what to do with 5,000 widgets that you've got sitting in your house and you need because you don't have 5,000 friends to give them away to also you're forty thousand dollars in debt so that's my two pieces of advice make a few now why no I'm curious what you just said I hear all the time how do you know that's true how do you personally know, know that true. because you're not that situation you 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 got, you're one of the, the fortunate ones. You've got a product that sells, you, you're in the game, you don't have to take out debt. So how do you know the other side of that story, Mark? Um, as, as far as over, as far as purchasing too much material and prepping or which part? Yeah, getting involved, spending too much money up front when you don't have any sales. How do you know that? I mean, how'd you figure I, that out? Well, I've heard horror stories. So a few of the people I've reached out to over time, one of the things, if, that your book was helpful with was was giving giving the idea to reach out to people who have done it before and I've reached out to a few people and I'm and I have a, a, a couple friends who were on Shark Tank and cut deals on Shark Tank uh, and acquaintances and they're in groups to chat and we we kind of communicate with each other about things that are a good idea and, and I've picked up a lot of lessons from them okay. um, I've gone to launch new products okay. myself um, you know and I've I, I just there. If, if there's the concern is that there's not a market and I'm, and if you've and I tried to launch a, um, a, a something smaller that, that kind of didn't it just didn't sell and um, okay and I'm glad I didn't I didn't buy fifty thousand of them before I did it you know? so you're not so, new like, at this either you you you've had a few bumps along the way prior to oh this gosh. oh gosh yeah I wish I knew now what I knew in the beginning and things would be <laughs> it's just so much different. But at the end of the day, you always have to pay your dues a little bit, I think. And um, yeah, I think so too. The learning process is tough. Yeah, That's, uh, it doesn't come through happiness and sunshine. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, Mark, thank you very much for coming on and making it real for everybody. It's yes, um, sir. thank you. It's extremely helpful and um, wonderful. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you.